Our next guest is a best-selling author and National Book Award winner. His novel, The Water Dancer, is available in paperback November 17th, and the adaptation of his book, Between the World and Me, airs November 21st on HBO and HBO Max. Please welcome back to the show, ta Coates. How are you, ta Hey, how's it going? Nice to be here, sir. It's always great to see you. Uh, for my money, you've written some of the best uh, journalistic pieces on the presidency, on the country uh, over the last decade. Uh, you uh, obviously have laid out your uh, differences of opinion uh, with Joe Biden uh, over the years, you yet also had made it very clear that he's a, a better choice if the other choice is Donald Trump. Uh, based on that, I'm assuming you were not uh, celebrating in the streets on Saturday, but how did you feel about uh, the people that were? I wasn't. I was not celebrating in the streets. Um, that's just not, that's not something I would do. That's, that's not how I interact with the world. That, that actually is not even, you know, any reflection on Joe Biden. I understand the people who were. Um, it's been a tough four years. I totally, totally get it. Um, I, I do worry that maybe we do not know how dark uh, it's about to get, you know, again, you know, really, really quickly. Um, but at the same time, people are human beings. Um, I understand it. I get it. You know, um, Trump was a, a different, you know, magnitude, you know, of, of, of corruption and, and of threat, you know, to, to the state and to democracy. So I understand it. I understand it. It wouldn't be what I would do, but I get it. Uh, I want to talk about the sort of two different sides of this that I think people are weighing, which is one, and you've said about Donald Trump, you're not necessarily a racist if you vote for him, but his racism is not disqualifying for you if you vote That's for right. him. And he got more votes than he did last time. Well, on the other hand... Uh, you have Joe Biden, you have Kamala Harris, uh, got more votes uh, than anyone. So how do you sort of see the two uh, working in concert? Um, well, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I, it's distressing that, that Donald Trump got, you know, uh, more votes. I think we had, a, you know, just a record level of, of participation. So the sheer amount of Americans that were involved in the process uh, was beyond anything that, that we'd ever seen. I, I think that's a good thing. You know, um, I would prefer a world where, where more people voted um, and, and my side lost, you know, the argument to a world where uh, the other side worked to suppress the numbers of people who voted. Um, and we lost because of that. Um, democracy, you know, you don't win every, every you know, battle, you know, in a, in a, in a democracy and, and that's fine. So I was, I was, you know, heartened, you know, by that. You know, I, I know how to deal with, you know, losing the argument. You just go back, you know, you, you, you figure it out and you try to make the argument Again, so, you know, while, you know, on some level um, it is, you know, depressing and, you know, all sorts of things I can say about, you know, the appeal, you know, that Trump ultimately had and what that says about uh, the country, I think more people participating is a, is a good thing. I'm not sure that, you know, uh, the party in power right now currently uh, believes that. I think it's safe to say they don't believe that. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, I want to talk to you. I went out on a limb there. <laughs> uh, I, I want to talk to you about the fact that uh, not just uh, the, uh, the World of Me is about uh, to be a TV show, uh, but now uh, the, the Water Dancer is going to be a film. What is it like for you to turn over your work uh, to people that will then adapt it for a different medium? So uh, difficult. <laughs> very difficult. Uh, with Between the World of Me, I had the great luxury of, of, of turning it over to a very, very old friend of mine, Camilla Forbes, who goes back... Uh, to my days at, at, at Howard University. So that was, that was pretty easy. And she did a stage in here in New York that I thought, you know, went off pretty well. So I, I trust her, you know, Im implicitly. She's also my wife's best friend. So that makes all of that very, very easy <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or, or to do. You know, um, as for the water dancer, um, I'm going to be the one writing the screenplay and doing the adaptation. So that shows you about how much I trust people <laughs> <laughs> to adapt the work. So for good or for ill, you know, we'll, we'll find out how that goes. <laughs> Uh, you know, another uh, thing you did a, a, a lot of the groundwork on, and we've talked about this before, but you had this incredible run on uh, the Black Panther comic book series. This was before it was a film. And you also mentioned uh, knowing people from your Howard days. You, you knew Chadwick uh, Boseman from your Howard days as well. Uh, what was that whole journey like? Uh, well, you don't know that you're on a journey. Um, and so it's only with, with his regrettable passing that, you know, I've become wistful and, you know, be, begun to think about it. Uh, you know, I, I met Chad uh, wildly enough uh, when I was a student journalist at the newspaper 
and he was leading a protest at, at the university and actually leading the protest with Camilla Forbes, who, you know, is adapting between the world and me. So, you know, this way that these worlds come together. And I was, I was a journalist at that time. And so I was reporting on, you know, what, what was a student takeover. And Chad was, you know, one of the leaders, if not, you know, the leader. So I, I knew him as, you know, a, a, a student and, and a young man of really strong principle. Um, I also, you know, knew him as, as an artist, not, you know, just as an actor, but as, as, as a writer, you know, as, as a director at that time. He is the last person in the world that I would have thought would become who he became, not because of any lack of talent, not because of any, you know, uh, a lack of ability or intellect or anything like that. But he, Chad was so principled, man. He, he wanted what he wanted, it, wanted and he wanted how he wanted it. And, you know, that, that was, you know, going to be it. And so it, it's shocking to me to watch, you know, what he ultimately uh, became. And yet, you know, when he was chosen to be Black Panther, um, I couldn't think of anybody who would be better because even back in our Howard days, he had that same sort of regal bearing um, that he, he, he brought uh, uh, to T'Challa. It wasn't a, a total reach, you know, for Chad to, to, to do that. And it, it's, um, it's a huge, huge loss uh, uh, to, to see him gone. You uh, you saw him, I guess it was probably at the premiere of, of Black Panther. Is this uh, with a photo we have of you guys together? <laughs> you guys blew that up. I did, yes. Yes, that's myself, my wife, and Chad. Yeah. Um, uh, that's fantastic. And uh, it really is. Uh, uh, what a journey to uh, have been in college with somebody and, and then sort of help, I don't know, rewrite the character that, that made him so Yeah, funny. that was, it, it was such a coincidence, too. It was, like, weird. Like, I, you know, like, from my perspective, I, you know, wanted to be a comic book writer when I was a kid, but I never thought it was actually going to happen. And I know, like, the, the strongest part of Chad was, the, you know, the writing and directing part. And here he becomes, you know, this, this, this huge leading man. And, you know, the night that picture was taken, you know, it was at the premiere. And I saw him, you know, across the room, and he, you know, had this, you know, he never, he never changed, you know, the celebrity part of him actually never changed, you know, who he was. And he looked um, like he did not enjoy being in a giant party surrounded by a bunch of people he, he didn't know. Um, and my thinking was, you know, had it, having had about 0.001% of the taste of that was, you know, I'm not even going to go over and talk to Chad. I'll see Chad, you know, when I see him. My wife, you know, was so excited, went over and talked to him. And he came over and, you know, wanted to, you know, take this picture and talk and everything. You know, he was, you know, always just so good about, you know, that sort of thing. I obviously didn't know at the time that he was sick. Is that know? that um, part of it is uh, it, it, so tragic and, and so retroactively, retrospectively, I should say, it's so impressive what he was going through. And, and yeah, no, he, he carried it, you know, and whatever, you know, pain that, you know, he was going through, which, which I assume to be quite considerable, um, he, he carried it. Well, uh, thank you for sharing uh, those stories about Chad, and thank you so much for being here. It's always such a pleasure to talk to you, Tanahasi. Thanks so much, Seth. Thanks for having me. The